Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at a few new things. We have a couple of limited edition things that are very limited in quantities, such as this new Chanel quad. This is number 388, Eclat de Nuit, and it is currently available at Chanel boutiques, but they have very limited stock. We're also going to be taking a look at the new Guerlain Cherry Blossom case and lipstick for this year. So again, this is limited edition as well and it goes very quickly. So it can be a struggle to get those every year. But we also have something permanent. So we have the three new shades of the Chanel number no. one. Uh, these are the cheek and lip tints. So I picked up all three of those. We'll take a look at these in comparison with the previous shades as well. And these are permanent. They're currently available at Chanel, but we should see them at Ulta at some point too. Let's start off with the Chanel eyeshadow quad. So it does come with two of the utensils that we see all of the time, plus the you know velour case there. And then this is the actual palette. You can see that we have, you know, it's, it's not like a super unique color story or anything like that, but it's a classic color story and it's one that I personally absolutely love. So we do have a black. This is gonna be a smooth matte black. And then we also have kind of this soft satin golden beige shade. And, you know, right off the bat, this kind of made me think of the one in the new Dior Smoky Essentials palette. So we'll take a look at that as well. And then we have this shade here, which is more of a satin matte. And you can see, just looking at my finger, you can see that the texture is a little bit different here. It's not as dry as the powdery matte in the black and it's kind of creamy. So if you want to build this up to get this like creamy color, you wanna use your finger or one of the foam tip applicators. With a brush, you're gonna get a much lighter, softer application. And so that's gonna make a big difference in the level of pigmentation. So just something to note, it's not like a hard pan shade or anything like that. It's just more of that putty-like texture. And then we have this last shade here, which is going to be, you know, kind of like a greenish, pewtery gold. <laughs> it's kind of a mix of all of those. So think of pewter and a little bit of antique gold mixed together with a little bit of that greenish hue to it. So this is the palette. And I have to say, I really love this palette. I love the different finishes. Let's take a look at the eye swatches and the demo. So as I mentioned, this palette is extremely limited and it's made in Italy. We have an 18 month shelf life and two grams of product. I have to say, I really love the different finishes in here. This, you know, matte black, it's a smooth matte black. Uh, you can see on my lid during the eye swatch, it was kind of clinging into the crease a little bit, but I had a little excess moisture there. So if that were totally dry or I had set it with powder, that wouldn't have been an issue. Then we have that beautiful soft satin kind of golden beige shade and that more putty, it's a medium warm brown shade and it's not overly warm, but there is a hint of a golden hue to it. And then we have more of this like olive tone, pewter shimmer, like in certain lighting, it's going to look more like a pewter gray. And then when you shift it, it shimmers to a little bit of a greenish gold. And I think it's a beautiful color. And that's really the star of this palette, in my opinion. So the formulas, they're very smooth, easy to use, easy to blend out. You can definitely make a really beautiful smoky look with this, or you could use this for like softer everyday looks. And I have to say, I really love the color story. When I first saw photos of this quad, the first thing it made me think of was a less shimmery version of the Holiday palette, which I personally really love, but those are all shimmers. And I think this is a great, more everyday palette. I actually wish this were part of their permanent line instead of something so limited. Let's move on to some comparisons. Now we're gonna start off by swatching this like golden beige shade here from Dior. This is the Smoky Essentials palette and I wanted to see how that compared to the Chanel. And you can see that they are not quite the same. The Chanel is going to be a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more, a, a little bit softer, more of a beige versus a brown in comparison. 
the Dior is almost a mix of these two shades from Chanel. Then let's take a look at the holiday palette from Chanel. And I have to say, I think it's, you know, it's definitely a beautiful palette, but you can see these two side by side. They definitely have some similarities in the color story. So let's go ahead and swatch these. So this first shade here, you can see it's gonna be a lighter, more ivory version of anything here, but it's more of a soft, almost a white gold, um, not quite bright enough. Then we have this shade here, which is more of a brown with a little bit of olive in there. So it coordinates very well with this palette, but again, it's not going to be a dupe. Then we have this black, and you can see that this black actually has some silver shimmer in it. It is not going to be a matte. And I have to say it's really smooth. I I personally like this one better than this black, um, but I love the Chanel shimmer formulas. Then we have kind of this soft, you know, golden beige here, and you can see it's more golden than what we have in the new Eclat de Nuit, but they are similar enough. So they're still pretty close. And then we have a sparkly white and here can you can I fit this in there we go and again that's not going to go with anything in here so color wise though really it's going to be these that are kind of your closest but your special shade in the Eclat de Nuit and look at the way the color shifts we don't have anything like that in this palette a couple others I want to look at this is the Chanel number no. five palette this was one of those special palettes that came out for the Chanel number no. five anniversary. And I'm just gonna swatch these four shades here. And really this palette, it's not similar, but I did want to kind of just take a look because again, we're still looking at kind of gold and black, but we don't really have kind of these softer neutral shades here. We have some shimmery, more like white gold and yellow gold and so forth mixed with the black. So it's a pretty different color story. And then this is the Chanel Tweed Bronze A Rose palette. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I'm just gonna put these four right here. And this, you know, is not something that's available anymore, but you can see that these browns here are pretty similar. This is vaguely similar to the second shade, but this is gonna have a little bit more yellow, more gold in it. The brown and the pink, the rose shade, those are not going to be present in here. So again, still nothing quite like that special shade. All right, so these are some Chanel comparisons. I'm going to remove these, and then we're gonna take a look at a few other comparisons from some other brands. All right, so first up, this is Guerlain Imperial Moon, and you can see that the color stories are wildly, wildly different, but I did want to go ahead and compare these because we do have, you know, uh, some similarities here. So we've got a black. This is a more putty-like velvety matte black. Then we have kind of this uh, silver shimmer. We have a kind of peachy shade here, and then this more shimmery shade. So again, it's just another kind of variation of this without this special shade. <laughs> and then I want to take a look at the Lisa Eldridge Vega palette. So let's see how this one compares here. And, you know, we definitely have some different shades in here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pair these up like this blue gray. This is a little bit more of a grayish beigey taupe but I wanted to take a look at these shimmers here and see how that compares. You can see that this is gonna be a bit more brownish than that in the Chanel. We have kind of this soft brown, which is very similar to that in the Chanel. The Chanel's a little bit warmer in tone. And then we have this kind of silvery shimmer with a little bit of pink in there and then a black. So, Again, we've got a few similarities, but still missing that shade. And for that shade, I wanted to see if maybe something in the sorcery palette might work. So I think these are still gonna be pretty different, but let's swatch these two here at the bottom. And let's put them up here so we can kind of see how they go. These are definitely brighter. They don't have that smoky vibe. We'll take a look at this kind of chartreuse shade too, but this is, we'll put that there. 
You can see that's wildly different. So still nothing quite like that one there. So I hope these comparisons were helpful. Overall, I have to say that this palette, I personally really like it. It is not a super unique color story overall. However, this shade here, I think makes a big difference in the palette, makes it very special. I love the formulas in here and I love how each one is actually a different formula. It gives you a little bit more variation in textures and finishes as well. So, you know, very limited. If you're interested in this one, definitely don't wait. And let's move on to, well, might as well do all the limited edition items first. We'll move on to the Guerlain Cherry Blossom. So you can see we've got kind of this soft brush gold here, and this is very smooth to the touch. It has these kind of brush stroke Sakura or Cherry Blossom flowers on it though, and you can feel the brush strokes on here. So, I've had quite a few questions as to whether or not this will scratch easily. And I would say if you're gonna throw this in your purse, yes, it could definitely easily be scratched against like keys or whatever it is, you know, that you might have in there. If you put this in a pouch in your purse, like a side pocket or something, it's probably gonna be absolutely fine. I personally don't carry these with me. I leave these out and uh, I don't, think mine will get scratched at all. So far, no issues. Now on Guerlain's website, you can get free engraving. And I have Lexi engraved in here. I'm not sure if you can really see that. I actually purchased mine from Guerlain at Saks in New York City. I'll leave Jason's name and number down below in the description box if you're interested in purchasing from him. But uh, that's where this popped up first. So I was able to get that while it was still available. Now the new lipstick shade is also gonna be limited edition. This is gonna be number 69 cherry bloom so i'm gonna put this kind of right across my hand so we can do some comparison swatches and you can see here that it definitely is different than the previous ones that we've you know looked at from guerlain's cherry blossom collection we have it's still a pink but we have a bit more red in here and it's actually a little bit of a brick red in there. So I actually paired it with the Chanel Rouge Brick number 180 lip pencil. And I'll just go ahead and put this here on the side. And you can see this is definitely deeper. So I used a very light layer, but the color does kind of go with it a little bit. So uh, the Chanel pencil is gonna be a little bit warmer, but let's go ahead and take a look at the lip swatches. And then we will take a look at some comparison shades. Now, these Guerlain Rouge G lipsticks, you buy the case and the lipstick refill separately. So it does add up, it's a very luxe item, but the cases do work with all Rouge G lipsticks. The lipstick itself has a little Guerlain emblem kind of on the front, and that's what clips into the case. The case will actually open up and you have that double-sided mirror there. So you definitely, you know, it's easy to use on the go if you want. It's a very weighty <laughs> lipstick. So, you know, almost one of those like weapon style lipsticks. But I personally love the Guerlain lipstick formula. The satins are definitely one of my favorites. And, you know, this collection every year is one that I always have on my radar and I'm always trying to get. There have been times where I've had to track them down, you know, like in Texas or various places, you know, just to be able to purchase one of these because they are very limited. But that being said, if you miss out on a limited edition color, there are always so many lipsticks and so forth around. We can always find something similar. So let's go ahead and move on to some comparisons. Now, just for reference, down here at the very bottom of what is actually the lipstick refill, there is a little printing of your color number. So this one is number 69. So if you're ever looking for that in the drawer, it is printed on there, but in certain lighting, it can be a little bit harder to see. So let's take a look one more time just at this lipstick itself. You can see how beautiful this is. And one of the things I really like about the Guerlain lipsticks, we have this slant here, but it's a steeper slant than a lot of other brands, which I find makes application very easy to be more precise. So, you know, it's just a little thing to notice. 
Now we're gonna start off with a few of the previous cherry blossom ones. So this one is from last year. This is number 63. And let's go ahead and put this one right here. You can see that this is gonna be a cooler pink. It's definitely rosier. Whereas this year we have more red in there. And then uh, this one here is number 62. This is from a previous year as well. And again, this one's gonna be uh, cooler in tone and more pink than this year's version. And it's a gorgeous shade though. I really, I love this shade. And then from summer last year, this is number six. So this is a really soft, pink satin. It's one of my favorites. This is one that I definitely like to reach for a lot. You can see though that although this is going to be more pink, we still have a little bit of kind of that reddish, that brick red hue to it. Just a little bit there on the base. And then, you know, we had two number eights that were released. So this one came out during the fall collection for 2023. And it's gonna be kind of a beigey shade here. It's a really pretty neutral shade. You can see it's definitely more brown compared to this lipstick. But then the previous holiday, we had a number eight also come out in the satin. And I don't know if they're supposed to be the same color, but you can see that the one for holiday is actually gonna be a bit rosier. So they are not quite the same. And yeah, you can see that this one here is like a more nude version of the lipstick, but again, we have kind of that brick red pink hue kind of mixed in there very, very softly. So those are some comparisons here from Guerlain, but I also wanted to take a look at a couple of the Clay de Peau holiday lipsticks from 2022 because this shade, when I put it on my lips, it made me think of these right away. So this one here is number 522 Cosmic Red. And we're going to put that one right here. And nope, this is way more orange. So it is definitely not like Cosmic Red. And then I wanted to take a look at this one, which is 523 Stellar Red. And again, not quite like it. But this is a little bit cooler version. And if you put this on very softly right there, Get a little bit of that hue, I like a cooler version, but still not similar enough. So those are my comparisons for the lipstick. I mean, I love the lipstick. I love the case. I think it is very elegant and beautiful and it's a piece of art. So again, we've got this double mirror and this stays closed when this little clip here on the case goes over it. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Chanel number no. one cheek and lip tints. All right, so let's start off by swatching the three new shades and then we'll move into the demos and then we'll go ahead and swatch the rest of the line. So this one here is number seven, a Vibrant Coral. And you can see there's actually a little bit of shimmer in here. So just not really like glittery or anything, but there is going to be some shimmer. So this one here is Vibrant Coral. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit deeper. And then if you were to buff it out, this is what you get. So it's kind of a pretty vibrant orange. It's not really coral, it's bright orange. <laughs> Number eight is Ardent Brick. This one does not have the shimmer. Uh, the only one of these three new ones that with the shimmer will be number seven there. And you can see that this is gonna have a little bit more of that brick hue, We've got a little bit of red and brown kind of mixed in there. And it's a really beautiful, you know, kind of like one of those classic shades. It's gonna work well on quite a few skin tones for like an everyday shade in my opinion. But my favorite is number nine. This is Purple Energy. This is what I have on right now. And you can see that it is a very vibrant kind of plum berry purple. And we definitely have some cool undertones in here. When you buff this out, you get more of like a brighter pink with a little bit of purple in there. So these are the three new shades. So let's move on to the cheek and lip swatches. The number one de Chanel Red Camellia Lip and Cheek Balms 
are a product that is exclusive to Chanel and Ulta. So you're not gonna see these at the regular department stores like Nordstrom and so forth. We have six and a half grams of product. These three are going to be permanent additions to the line. So, you know, we are looking at something, these three colors are sticking around. According to Chanel, these are enriched with red camellia oil. This multi-use balm helps hydrate and comfort while adding a touch of color to lips and cheeks. Its smoothing texture melts onto skin to create a plump appearance. And as I said, we have six and a half grams of product. It's made in France and we have an 18 month shelf shelf life on these. So I have to say, I think these are a really nice product. So I'll use these on the cheeks more often usually during the summer because they are a little tacky. You can tell that we have kind of that sheer shine effect to them. So if you think about a lot of, you know, like liquid or cream highlights that have kind of that sheer shine effect, it's almost that mixed in with a cream blush. So there's a little tackiness if you, layer this on if you use very soft light layering you don't really feel the tackiness but it does help lock moisture into your skin now these are excellent as a lip balm and i actually think these are better than the rouge coco balms from chanel because these they lock in the moisture a bit better to your lips they do add some hydration but they give you a lot of shine and you can layer these on you know so that they are very softly pigmented or you know, a little bit brighter. So I think these are excellent for both uses, but definitely for the lips, they're just, they're a really great product for that. And uh, yeah, you know, with this cheek product, if it feels a little too tacky for you, one of the things I like to do with this, because it's not one that really shifts around and moves easily. This product really does pretty much stay where you put it. It's kind of like this, uh, you know, it's hard to explain what it feels like if you haven't touched it, but it feels like a smooth, tacky cheek product that, you know, it kind of grips a little bit. So because of that, you can wear this underneath foundation as well. So if a color is too deep or you want to layer it on a little bit brighter, you could cover it with like a cheek tint or foundation and still see it without having a a whole lot of movement of the product underneath, you know, when you're actually putting that foundation on. So of course, be careful with your application, but we do, it's not as slippery as some cheek products. The color on these, they do tend to remain on my skin all day. I don't, I have very minimal fading. And, you know, we have kind of this like shine, this inherent shine to it that I feel like a highlighter is not required with these. You know, it's totally optional. So as always, but you know what I mean, we're gonna get that shiny effect that gives you a natural highlight to your cheekbones. So let's go ahead and swatch the original shades. This one here, it looks like I haven't used, but actually I do, I just <laughs> use such a tiny amount. This one's actually one of my favorites. So we're gonna swatch the original shades kind of vertically so we have room. Um, but you can see that this is gonna be a soft pinky red. It is gonna be a cooler red, and I think this one gives a beautiful flush. So this is actually one that I absolutely love, both on the lips and the cheeks. I think it's a really beautiful shade. You can see it's not going to match up with any of these here. Definitely a nice addition here. Now, shade number two, this is called Healthy Pink. This is another like kind of great shade here for every day. And I've used this one a lot more. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the whole thing is indented here. And it's just like a great kind of everyday shade. It's an interesting pink because you have like pink and nude and a little bit of peach. It's kind of like an amalgamation. And it's just a really pretty shade and Moving on though, we have number three. This is Vital Beige. And this one here, you can see, we've got some brown, we've got some red, we've got some plum. You know, it's again, a nice mixture. And that's one of the great things about these shades is they're a little different than some of the other shade offerings for cream blushes on the market. And these are kind of a mix of your traditional cream blush and like a shine serum. If you've used something like the Katie Jane Hughes, the KJH 
uh, highlighter set that comes with the pigment and the shine serum separately. It's kind of like you've got that shine serum mixed in with a traditional cream blush. So that's what I feel like with these. So this is number four, Wake Up Pink. And I did want to put this one right here so we could kind of see how that compares there to the Vibrant Coral. You can see that this is actually going to be a little bit softer and it's actually more pink. This is more of a coral than the Vibrant Coral. And let's go ahead, we'll just keep our collection down here as well. So got this. This is one that just, it really does just wake up the skin nicely. It's kind of a soft coral. Five Lively Rosewood. And you can see this is a nice rosy pink shade. It doesn't have quite as much brown as your traditional rosewood, but it is definitely gonna be a rosier rosewood. And you can see that this is kind of like a, a dustier shade in general, whereas the new shades are pretty vibrant you know, very, uh, you know, in your face in a way. Uh, they have more of that transparent base. And then uh, shades five and six in the original are, this are gonna be a bit more dusty. So number six is Berry Boost. And I have to say, it is hard to read this name on here because it's such a deep shade. But you can see that this is gonna be a reddish berry, whereas our new one here is gonna be more purple. Let's go ahead and put that with it so you can see the difference. You can see we definitely have more of a warmer red undertone. It's still not a warm shade per se, but compared to the purple energy, it's definitely got more red in it. All right, so this is the entire collection then of the Chanel number no. one lip and cheek tints or cheek and lip tints and to say i really i like this product a lot and i think the new shades are a great addition if i had to choose the purple energy is definitely my favorite and then surprisingly the vibrant coral you know i i like that one very softly dusted on so uh, all three shades though are fantastic and i have and to I say i think overall the color story for this entire range is very well done we've got some brighter shades again they can go lighter they can go deeper but we also have some dustier and some more neutral options so it's a very versatile range and the product itself is multi-use which is great so let me know what you think of these products. Let me know if you've tried any of these, what your thoughts are on these. I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.